The question is the House to now adjourn. I call the member for Griffith. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, I rise on a matter of human rights uh, in a country a long way from Australia but of deep concern still to members of the international community, and I speak here of the country of Mongolia. Mongolia is a vast country of only 2.8 million people, sandwiched between the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. Uh, it is a beacon of hope for democracy in Asia. Since democratic transformation in 1990, 1990, it has built a reputation in the West as an emerging democracy worthy of our support. Mongolia has gone through multiple elections over the last 20 years. Indeed, the visit by Prime Minister Batbolt to Australia last year was a welcome occasion, noting the respect and admiration we in Australia have for the achievements of Mongolia and the Mongolian people. We cooperate in multiple areas, minerals, energy and education, as countries that both respect open markets and both respect the rule of law. A number of Mongolian cabinet ministers have been educated in Australian universities, and we have significantly increased the Australian Government scholarship program to that country. Yet despite these achievements, recent developments have given rise to real concerns across the international community, and it is with genuine sadness that I now believe it is right to raise these matters in this parliament. Members of the parliament may be aware that the former Mongolian president, Enk Bayar, was arrested on the 13th of April 2012 to face purported charges of corruption. The uh, arrest itself has raised Mr. questions as to whether well, it constituted an appropriate execution of the arrest Washington. warrant. Last week, his trial was due to commence. Parliament it has now been delayed until the 4th of June. The critical point for those following Probably this case not. is that the former president is now a candidate for the upcoming parliamentary elections due in late June. Madam Deputy Speaker, Lord Peter Goldsmith, a friend of Australia, a friend of Mongolia and the former Attorney General of the United Kingdom, is one of Mr Ankbaya's lawyers and has put a particularly disturbing case in recent discussions he has had with me on this matter. Lord Goldsmith's concern is that the current charges appear to be connected with the fact that in late 2010, Mr Ankbaya split from the current president's Mongolian People's Party to form a new party. Lord Goldsmith has expressed concern that there is a clear political motive in the charges which have been brought against Mr Ankbaya, that these charges are in the main trivial, that they are a number of years old, that they have only now resulted in legal action being taken against him, and only weeks before the election in which the former president is a candidate. The Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party, led by Mr Ankbaya, could indeed hold a balance of power after the scheduled parliamentary elections are held and provide a position from which Mr Ankbaya could later contest the presidential elections. The timeline of events is important. On 13 April, the former president was arrested live on national television as he was taken from his home barefoot with a bag on his head with reports of up to 200 police involved in the arrest. Two weeks of detention followed until 27 April when an extension of his detention was approved for up to another two months. From 13 April until 7 May, the former president was denied contact with family members and did not have proper access to his legal representatives. The two-month extension of his detention beyond 27 April would have had Mr Ankbaya in jail until the very eve of the parliamentary elections due on the 28th of June. I'm pleased that following international pressure, Mr Ankbaya has since been released on bail and provided with medical assistance. However, together with others in the international community, we are concerned about the lack of information concerning the details of the allegations against him. The Chairman of the United States Senate Select Committee, Senator Feinstein, uh, the Senate Committee on Intelligence, has raised her concerns to the United States Congress on this matter, as has the former US Ambassador to Mongolia, who has stated his concern that he does not want to see a backslide on the progress that has been made in Mongolia in the period that Mongolia has achieved its independence. Today also, therefore, I place my concerns on the public record. Concerns not only for due process to occur in that country, but also my deeper concern about the damage this case may do to the good name that Mongolia has achieved in its democratic transformation in the period since, to, since 1990. Madam Deputy Speaker, I support Amnesty International's call for Mr Ankbaya's right to access to lawyers, contact with family members, adequate metal, me, uh, medical care, and the right to liberty. Madam Deputy Speaker, the time has come for due process and for due political process to be restored fully in Mongolia in this most controversial of cases. 
Madam Deputy Speaker, I would respectfully request for the President of Mongolia to respond to these considered concerns raised by the international community on this case.